Thin icy snow crunches under worn brown boots. A slender figure wrapped in a purple leather cloak trudges through a heavy snowstorm in a frozen wasteland. The figure pauses to pull their hood down to assess the gray snow-covered landscape. A young man's face emerges scrunched and shivering with an intense glare as he surveys the area for anything other than the snow. His face springs to life with wide eyes and a hopeful grin. Hopping through the snow like an overexcited rabbit, he rushes towards a small spire jutting out of the ground, barely visible under the knee-deep layer of powder. He stops just a few feet away as he digs into his red and white robes and pulls out a large piece of parchment. A strong wind rips it from his hand and into his face. As he slowly peels it away, he perfectly lines up the image on the paper with a structure standing in front of him. His look of hope turns to one of victory. He is here. A cold, dark room sits lifeless and still as light and snow pour in from a collapsed hole in the wall. The young man pokes through, face darting side to side, taking in his surroundings. He steps through over the rubble, brushing a thin layer of frost off of himself and putting the parchment back into his pocket. He reaches his foot forward, about to take a step, but immediately stops as his eyes adjust to the darkness and he sees the frighteningly deep drop in the center of the small room. Close one, he whispers to himself as he takes a step back. He turns to see the landing he's on descends, curving with the round wall of the chamber. He peers over the edge to get an idea for how dark his destination will be. Positioning himself at the top of the stairs, he reaches into his pocket and picks out a small coin. Whoever's profile was once pressed onto its face has been made unknowable by the small runes carved into the surface. He pings the coin into the abyss and waits with ear ready as the metallic ringing slowly fades into nothingness. After a moment, the sound of metal and stone is heard a fair distance away. He smiles, pulls out a nearly identical coin, and raises it to his ear. The face on the coin animates and whispers to him, Roughly 97 feet. With an excited smile, the boy puts the second coin back into his pocket and begins the trek down the steps. The tip-tap of his old leather boots echo down the open spiral staircase. As the darkness begins to overtake his vision, the boy traces his fingers in the air and mutters an arcane incantation. Suddenly, numerous glowing orbs shoot out from his fingertips and slowly hover around his head, illuminating the area like fireflies. His slow steps turn into excited hops down the narrow stone stairs, the light zooming to keep up. He reaches the bottom with a leaping stump into a small puddle of slush. The chamber has only one door that leads into complete blackness ahead, and a small pile of snow in the center of the room. Half buried in the pile of snow sits a long, dead skeletal figure, cloaked in heavy decaying furs and leathers. The boy shuffles over to the pile, bends down, and picks up the coin he tossed earlier. The lights shine dull on the skeleton's face, and the boy gives a solemn look before moving the snow to cover the body fully. He whispers, I'll find it for both of us, stands up, and walks toward the doorway. Four dim globes of light hover in the middle of a stone archway shining onto the young man's face. The room ahead is pitch black, and the floor goes on, seemingly forever, into the inky black void. Two cold braziers hang from the wall on either side of the doorway. They are the only visible distinction the boy can see, even with the floating lights around his head. He points his finger to one of the braziers, and a single hovering light whips around his head and shoots into the long, dried, ash-filled bowl in the center, igniting it into a tiny dancing flame. Immediately, in a domino effect, the room around him illuminates from similar braziers lining the wall to his left and right. The boy's face glows with joyful radiance as the enormous room is revealed before his eyes. The lovely marble flooring holds mosaic images of the gods, maps of long-lost lands, heroic figures performing heroic duties, and fantastical creatures known only to legend. The artwork on the floor is interrupted by rows upon rows of towering bookshelves, more and more being revealed as the torches continue to ignite. An endless sea of knowledge sits just beyond the awestruck young man. He bites his lower lip in pure excitement and rapidly claps his hand as he bounces in place. I found it. I found it. He yelps. A sigh of relief escapes him as he whispers, I actually found it. His joy turns to concern, however, as the ground beneath him rumbles. A tremor? This far north? He mutters to himself. But his concern of a quake is quickly quelled as the now lit aisles of books are darkened by a towering silhouette, hundreds of feet in the distance. Uh-oh. Crashing thuds echo around a large chamber. The young man's head darts from side to side, looking for a place to hide. He dashes in the direction of two closely positioned bookshelves, holds his breath, sucks in his stomach, and shimmies between them. The bangs and booms get louder and louder as the enormous figure gets closer and closer. The young man slowly and quietly removes a few books from the shelf near his face to get a sneaky glance at the looming figure. He peeks through the opening to see only a bulbous, hairy knee 
wrapped in leathery straps that spiral down to a huge wooden sandal held together by what smells like glue and sweat. A giant of some kind? He whispers to himself in confusion. The giant lumbers on toward the entrance of the library, scratching its enormous backside as it walks. Covered in a massive amount of furs and leathers, it looks from afar to be some kind of otherworldly beast. The young man tries to take a step back from the bookshelf he was hiding in as his cloak catches a loose nail, causing the shelf to slightly sway toward him. Panic in his eyes, as he sees what's about to unfold, the young man quickly tries to hold the book in place, moving his arms at light speed to each falling tome. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, he whispers loudly. Books come crashing down around him in a cacophony of leather-bound thuds. With wide eyes and pursed lips, he slowly turns toward the giant, not fifty feet away. The giant snaps its head around to glare at the young man, revealing its one massive central eye and a full, bushy braided beard. With a loud exhale and a resounding rumble, the giant exclaims, Who goes there? The young man immediately turns tail and dashes deeper into the mysterious library. Every other step he takes is interrupted by an earth-shattering thump, bouncing him into the air as the giant bulldozes its way through shelf after shelf of books. The entire chamber shakes with each of the giant's footfalls, causing lanterns to fall from their hooks, chains to jostle and clank, and the great round chandeliers hanging above to rock back and forth. Sprinting as fast as he can, the young man dives behind a pile of tightly stacked tomes piled high on the floor. He searches his belt, panicked, sweat dripping from his brow, and pulls out a small metallic wand? Better than nothing, he mutters. The giant stomps closer, coming to a stop no further than ten feet from the pile of books the young man is hunched behind. His large, round nose sticks out over the thick, black beard and sniffs the air violently. Where did you go? The giant says under his breath. Peering over the top of the pile, the young man closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, bites his lip, and points the gleaming metal wand directly at the head of the giant. After a short moment of silence, he opens one eye, and the other, and inspects the wand closely. Stupid thing! The young man shouts and smacks the wand with the other hand. The large round eye of the giant zooms to the young man's direction as the giant shrieks, Found you! and begins to take a step forward. The young man's eyes lock onto the giant, now barreling towards him as he frantically slaps the wand around. Just then, the tip of the wand illuminates, and streaks of colored light burst outward into the air. Fireworks fill the space around the giant's head as he screams and groans, calling out, What magic is this? The giant loses its footing and topples to the ground with a bang so big a few of the bookshelves near it jump into the air and collapse. One of the round steel chandeliers hanging above breaks free of its hook and crashes onto the giant, bending over its head and becoming stuck around the neck like a collar. The thick iron chain that held the chandelier aloft, still connected to the stone wall, now holds the giant in place like a tethered dog. The young man sees his chance to escape and begins to dash toward the darkened doorway. Cloak billowing behind him, the young man runs headfirst toward the door. The sounds of the angry giant continue to roar and moan with the jangle of chains being pulled taut against the wall. The further the young man runs, the quieter the groaning becomes. He arrives at the doorway and takes one last look back. The sound of the giant can still be heard deep into the library. Roaring. Then groaning. Then moaning. Then what sound like tearful cries. The young man pauses at the door for a moment looking back at the aisles of the library, then at the door, then back at the library again. He scratches his head, then takes a step back toward the towering bookshelves. Are you going to be okay? The young man shouts into the darkness. He waits a moment. A deep voice echoes back. Go, and never return. The young man shuffles in place, debating whether or not to run through the door and back up the stairs. He turns toward the library once more and shouts, I just... Are you sure... You seem pretty stuck in that chain, so- Because of you! The giant's voice grumbles from afar. The young man scrunches his face and confidently walks back toward the giant. You chased me down! The young man exclaims, with arms outstretched. Because you intruder! The giant shouts, with arms also outstretched. Oh. The young man says. Is this your home? The giant sighs and shuffles into a more comfortable position. Home? No, not home. Waiting, the giant says with a sense of despair. Waiting? Do you mind if I ask for whom? The young man asks. Master, the giant mumbles as he begins pushing rubble around with his fingers. The young man takes a long look at the giant, steps forward and says, If I free you, do you promise to let me go safely? 
The giant gives a long look back and says, You help me? The young man takes a book out of his robe, opens it to a marked page, and sits on the ground. He points his finger toward the giant's neck and says, This one's kind of tricky, so stay still. I haven't really practiced it much. As he traces arcane designs into the air in front of him and mutters an incantation, a flash of blue light sparks as the bent steel chandelier around the giant's neck swells and grows to double its size. The giant's face shines with joy as it pulls the metal ring over its head, freeing itself from the chains. That was magic? The giant shouts. It was, the young man says. You do magic like master? You come here to read book like master? The giant asks as it crawls toward the young man, intrigued. I did, the young man exclaimed loudly. Do you mind if I have a look at some of these books now? The giant stands up on its two meaty legs. No mind, but master get mad at books. Said make no sense. The young man's face grows confused as he picks up a book and opens it to the middle. His brow furrows even further as he flips page after page. The book was full, but not in the language he understood. Strange words filled each page of every book he picked up. This was no language he had ever encountered. Hmm. The young man sighed. Well, that's upsetting. That what Master said, too. The giant says as it lifts a fallen shelf and begins stacking books back into the bare spaces. The young man holds up a book and turns to the giant, asking, Do you mind if I take this one? Hmm. The giant thinks to itself, Not sure if allowed to take. The young man thinks for a moment and reaches into his satchel. He pulls out a smaller leather-bound tome with a copper clasp holding it closed and says, Well, what if I leave one of mine with you in exchange? Maybe you can even understand this language. You'll have something to read to pass the time while you wait. The giant smiles and plucks the book from the young man's hands. Can impress Master with reading when he returns, the giant says happily. The young man bids the giant farewell as he makes his way back toward the doorway. Wait, the giant shouts loudly down the aisle. You have name? Sadiq, the young man shouts loudly back. Do you? Kustos, the giant yells. Thank you for the book, Kustos. Sadiq shouts through the doorway as he begins to climb the stairs back to the icy tundra, waiting for him outside. Kustos' voice echoes through the tall tower. Thank you for the book, Mr. Sadiq. <laughs>